Because you know that fire was eating up a whole section of you. And now that it's ash, God says, let me put some love in that place. Let me put some peace in that place. Let me put some joy on in there. Let me give you some hope. Welcome to Living Word, growing a family that experiences every promise of God. You're listening to another life-changing word from Pastor Scott Anderson. For more information, visit our website at livingwordonline.com. Give a big hand clap and a honk for those that are watching us on podcast, vidcast, whatever, Comcast, Upcast, wherever you are. And if you're ever in the area, come on, stop on in. You can be in our, our, dri- our drive-in or you can be in the house. Either way, I know this will make you feel right at home. Don't forget about our daily Bible study. Me and my brother do. It's called Wake Up. Monday through Friday, and uh, we do a Bible study. We start your day off with a scripture. We pray over your day, and uh, we have a whole lot of fun. We're the number one daily Bible study. So you go to YouTube, actually any social media platform, and you type in daily Bible study. We come up number one, and it's just kind of a great way for you to, that's a lot of salt. Amen. So, so every year when it starts to get a little warm, I take the, the doors off of the Jeep, and it always provides you all with a fun little story every time the Jeeps are off. Like last, uh, in the fall, when I took the doors off, remember I went to Outback, and I had my amazing, given by God, Outback bread. I turned, and it shot out the sleeve right into the middle of the road, got ran over. And come to find out that ran over Outback bread is quite good. And so, <laughs> so, so we were going to watch, uh, we decided as a family to watch uh, Godzilla and, 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 and uh, the other, the King Kong. And, uh, but to do that at home, we got to have the popcorn. My wife loves the popcorn. So I ran up to Fat Cats in the Jeep and I uh, got the popcorn. Now, normally she's just like a little one, but they sold me on the 72 gallon tub. Have you seen this one? <laughs> right? You get the, the, the free refills for the year. And so I bought the massive uh, tub of popcorn. Got in the Jeep, put it in on the seat right there next to me, and off I went. When the Jeep hit 33 miles per hour, the Jeep looked like I was stuck in a Jiffy Pop, if you know what that is. (laughs) There was just popcorn just going every single way all over. It looked like I was in one of those little dollar things where the dollars are flying up all over. It was funny. I wish you could see it, but you kind of can. If you go up to Fat Cats, you can follow a trail to my house. <laughs> Show a, a little picture. We, I, threw a, I, I got a picture when I got home. We had, like, I got the big popcorn, but when we got home, I just had a small for Holly. Amen? <laughs> Who's ready for the word today? Anybody out there? Come on, give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Open up your Bibles. Uh, we're going to be in Hebrews 12, 1, and then Isaiah 61, 3. We're in our series called m M&M, and if, if you haven't heard it yet. Everybody loves M&M's, and it stands for Move Momentum. When I begin to move, I begin to gather the momentum that I need to break the barriers off of my life. The devil works hard to get us stopped because he knows anything that's not moving begins to stagnate. And oftentimes we find in our lives that we get in areas of life that stagnate. We stop moving. There, there's no life in our relationship. There's no life maybe in our marriage right now. There's no life in the job. And it isn't because life's not available. It's that we stop somewhere along the line. We gave up. We got in a rut, right? We're, we're just stuck in the mud, in a sense, in these areas. And what this series is about is getting you just to begin to take a step and begin to move again. And as I begin to move, well, Pastor, what if I go in the wrong direction? Well, God can't steer a stop. He can steer your steps. And when I begin to step, God begins to steer me right into the plans and purposes of life. And the enemy knows he can't stop you, has no power to stop you whatsoever. But what he tries to do is put things in your way to convince you to stop yourself. But if I get myself a moving, that momentum that I have begins to break off the chains, it begins to run over the giants, it gets the mountains to move out my way, I begin to go from breakthrough to breakthrough to breakthrough where I begin to live a life that is unstoppable. My life begins to move towards God's best in our life. Now, if the devil's little things that he puts in front of you doesn't stop you, then what he tries to do is weigh us down. We've been talking the last couple of weeks about uh, getting weighed down in life where we begin to, we get weary. We, we can't do as much as we used to do. It's because we begin to pick up some things that we were not designed to carry. Here in Hebrews, uh, they're talking here in uh, Hebrews 12, 1, let us throw off. Somebody say throw off. Throw off everything that slows us down. 
that keeps us from moving. Get running. He says, start stepping, start moving again, and don't ever stop moving in this lifetime. There are things that we have picked up along the way that have slowed us down. Last week, we talked about stress and worry. You weren't designed to carry it. Yet, so many Christians carry stress and worry into the day. And they feel like they're moving, but as we talked about last week, you're just moving in circles. You're just going, what if this happens? And what if that happens? And what if these things? And everything that you have no control over continues to keep you spinning round and round and round, getting dizzy, and never getting any place that God wants you to get. But as I learn to take on God's yoke and give him my stress and my worry, here you go, God, I can't change the boss, but what I can do is give that to you and just do my best in the job. I can't change the problem that's going maybe in my relationship, but I'll give that to you. Lord. I can't change the economy. I can't change what's going on in, 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 in these things in America that's going on. But what I can do is give it to you and be my best every day. And now I can move with great momentum to overcome the things that I was designed to overcome. Come And if you deal with stress and you need it and you haven't seen it yet, go to YouTube, watch that one and learn how to throw it off. But today we're going to talk about, I would say, the heaviest thing that the devil gives you an eye to carry. It's the big one. It's the one that really gets people to stop in so many areas of their life. It gets them to, to stop moving in their marriage and stop moving in the relay, stop moving in the job. We just stop because it becomes too heavy for us to go on. You were not designed to carry bitterness, unforgiveness. You weren't designed to carry those things inside of you. So many times, you know what's funny is, is everyone in this room has carried it. Everyone, a lot of us probably are carrying it. Every time that I do anything on forgiveness, it's funny, there's 90, 95% of the people are like, yeah, that's me. I've been carrying a heavy weight that, that, that just seems to drag me down. I get tired. I'm weary throughout the day. Nothing seems to be working in my life. It's because you're carrying some hurt and some bitterness. And how many people know that people do dumb things all the time? There are hurtful. I can't go to the Walmart without a bunch of people doing things that annoy the heck out of me. People do things. It happens. The thing that we have to learn to do is not to pick up the offense, not to pick up those things in life. You know, an offense happens. That's an event. Being offended is a decision. It's a decision that I make to pick up the offense rather than just leaving where it goes. Diego, where are you at? Come on up. Give a hand for Diego. I don't know where he's at. Get up here, Diego. Oh, we love <laughs> he makes life. I want you to know that Diego makes life fun. He's a college soccer player, very athletic. As athletic as I am, maybe a little bit more. We don't know. It's close. Here's the thing about Diego. He could catch, like if I took off running right now, I wouldn't get three steps before Diego could catch me. He's very athletic, right? And, and, and he runs all around, everything else, right? Now, if Diego was to pick up some hurt, grab some hurt there. <laughs> yeah. All right. You all right? <laughs> get some overlooked, got overlooked. Maybe, I don't know if you got enough, if you need, you, somebody scammed you, somebody wronged you, somebody abandoned you, you got forgotten, there was abuse that happened in your life right? You got rejected. You got all of the things that everyone in this room, we've dealt with a number and some, maybe all of these things. Now, I could walk at a very slow pace and he wouldn't get me. Does that make sense? Yeah, come bring it. Come on, bring it. What do you got? Yeah, oh no. Oh no, not Diego's coming. He's still pretty fast. <laughs> Dang it. Give a hand clap, Diego. You can go before you get your hands on me. He's a beast. <laughs> but many of us are carrying that weight around. And the job that we used to love is so hard. The spouse that we would chase all over the world, I don't have the energy even to catch up to you right now. And it's because over time and period, we begin to pick up an offense. We picked up some rejection. We picked up some, and we begin to carry these things with us. And we have not thrown them off so that I can run the race. And what happened? Well, Pastor, you don't know what they did to me. It was so hurtful. But here's the problem when you pick up that offense. Then I let them hurt me back there, and I'm allowing them to continue to hurt me right here. I've got too many things to do in this life to allow your junk that you did way back there to slow me down to what God has for me up here. He's got things that he wants to take me to. But if I'm weighed down with junk, we sacrifice our future on the altar of our past. That's why Paul said this. He says, I do one thing. I love that. He goes, if there's anything that you do, he goes, learn this one thing. 
I forget those things that are behind me, and I press to the prize that is ahead. And if you grab anything out of today and you walk out of here, do a Paul thing where you said, I am going to forget the hurts that happened as a child. I'm going to forget that daddy took off and wasn't around. I'm going to forget that they reject. I'm going to forget the divorce and the, the bad things that they did. I'm going to forget all of the behind me because God's got some great things ahead of me. And devil, I got news for you. I'm not going to let you slow down one step of me getting to God's best in my life. Come on, somebody in this house. I ain't going to allow it. I'm not going to let you slow me down. I'm not going to let that hurt and that junk and that awfulness that happened in my, in my past to slow me down at all. But instead, I'm going to propel ahead by shaking it off. And that's what we're going to learn today. How do I get rid of that bitterness? How do I get rid of that unforgiveness? Because a lot of times we've been carrying that on for a long, long time. I... Don't drink the Starbucks at all, but I'm at Starbucks nearly every day getting my wife her Starbucks or my kids. They all love the Starbucks. It's like crack. And so, no, it is. It's probably just as expensive. And so, <laughs> Lord, help me. So, uh, I, I, I go to get, and it's tricky because sometimes the line will get long. And if you're, if you're not used to it, like you get caught off guard because some people leave a space in the parking lot for other people to get through. And so I was on the phone with my mom uh, talking, going to get Holly Starbucks. And so I'm like, oh, here's the line. So I, I got kind of sideways into the line, not realizing that there were people waiting over on the left over here. I didn't know that. So I'm talking on the phone. And all of a sudden, there's a bang on my way. And I look over, and there's a rhinoceros of a man, a big bald man. No, he's big. <laughs> And he's like, get out of the vehicle. I'm going to kick your beep, 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 beep. I'm going to beat you. And I'm like, what are, we're not in the sixth grade. I'm not going to fight you in the Starbucks. I'm like, what? He's like, the line's over there. And I didn't see the line right over there. He's like, yeah, over there. And I'm like, get out of here. Whatever. And so I waved at him with a finger or two. And so it's probably a cop. I'm like, get out of here. Jesus is number one. And so... Off he goes, and as he's going to his vehicle, his wife is in the, in the passenger seat, and she's just got her head down. You can tell she's embarrassed. She's not, she's not doing well with this at all. And so I get in my car, and then I'm driving over. And you know how you do like that self-talk now? You begin to, I should have just got out. I should have beat him right, right to the throat. Yeah, get to the back of the line. Your mom's in the back of the line, right? I don't even know what that means, but that's what I wanted to say. And you get to the back, uh, right, and I get behind him, and then he's like looking in his rearview mirror with his big old bull, and he's all, and as I'm staring at him too. And then I, I heard in my spirit, God go, buy their drinks. And I said, hell no. <laughs> That's what I said. I'm sorry, I had to say it. That's what I said. I'm just telling you what I said. No, I did. I said, I said, no. I said, buy their drinks. I said, no. Your word says that you cut my enemies down like the noonday grass. Get a cutting, because I ain't buying them a drink. <laughs> Buy them a drink. I said, mmm. He said, love them. I said, mmm, all right. Oh, that hurt so hard. He was so hard. I was so angry, so frustrated. I said, fine. I got up to the little drive through and I said, hey, I want to buy the drinks up ahead. And uh, the lady goes, she goes, are you sure? And I go, why would you say that? She goes, oh, you should hear what he said about you. I go, are you serious? He's telling the Spar Starbucks lady on me. I say, yeah, I'll buy their drinks. I'll buy them, right? And so then they pull up to the window, right? He pulls up the window, and he goes to pay, and then she's like, no, and then she points back here, and then you tell he's like, no, I want to pay, and she's like, no, he's, he's going to pay right there, and then the most magical thing in my whole life ever happened. Her, his wife's head snapped like this, and then it just began to go to town. <laughs> it just went to town. No, it was just going until his door slowly opened, and he got out. He looked like a six-year-old in trouble, right? He walked all the way to the car. He got to my window. I rolled that window all the way down. <laughs> Can I help you? He said, ah, sorry. For, uh... He looked over, and she's all, he saw her being a jerk back there, and thank you for the drinks, and he walked back to his car, and I said, thank you, God, for using her to cut down the noonday grass, amen? <laughs> it's amazing that the power of love has, the power of love, God so loved the world, 
sent his son to forgive us of all of our transgressions, of everything you and I have ever done. That love is the most powerful weapon for us to drop all of the hurts and the pains that slow us down. When you carry that bitterness and that unforgiveness, it makes us stumble in our relationships. It hinders our future relationships, whether it's with our children or our spouse or, or dates that we're on or boss or whatever it is because we weren't designed to carry it. And the devil knows us. That's why he worked on it from as far back as you can remember. He was already working at getting you offended because he wants to slow your life down. In our house that we just moved into in January, out back we have this big old fire uh, uh, place, and it's got like a, a pizza oven, and it is massive, and it's real deep. As I was walking around it, right, uh, and here's what I, I was walking with Vince, Vince, my buddy here from the church, and we were walking by it, and in it, it's just full, the, the past owner left it full of just lumber and wood, which is fine, but then he just shoved tree branches and, and paper, and there's leaves, and just, and it's literally, like, there's, it was 90, it was like 90% full all the way back. I mean, it, it goes way back in there, and I told Vince, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't even want to clean that stupid thing out. I'm like, I don't know what's in there. There's probably ant snakes and scorpions and spiders, and, and who knows what's living in that thing. I don't want to clean that. And Vince, he smiles, as Vince does. He's always got great ideas. He goes, well, what you should do is just take some lighter fluid and light that thing on fire. It's in a fireplace. Number one, write down this. Never listen to Vince. <laughs> just write that down. So it was, it was a January night. It was freezing. If you remember January, like we had some cold nights there. And so I got that lighter fluid on there and I, and I, I, threw, I, threw, a, I threw a match in there and it's it started burning, right? Now, I want you to walk through this example when it comes to bitterness. You know, life gives you a bunch of garbage oftentimes from people. And we store it up on the inside of us. Inter interesting that how a, something uh, just builds, it grows on its own. You have a little bit of unforgiveness. And all of a sudden, it just gets bigger and bigger. And everything they start to do annoys you. You see them smile. I hate a smile. It makes me nauseated, right? Everything, right, it just begins to grow and grow and grow. And so that garbage begins to grow. And then that fire gets to start it on the inside of you. And it almost feels good. It, was, it just felt a little nice, right? You talk about them and you're telling people in the break room and all things wrong, right? It feels, in a weird way, it feels a little good. But then that fire begins to get bigger and bigger as we stoke it, as we talk about it. And it came a point, like I just had to keep taking a step back. I'm like, that's hot and hot. And I got like, like 10 feet away from it. It was still, like it was a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fire going there. That thing was hot. And then Holly came outside, right? She came out over there. She's like, oh my gosh, you're trying to burn the house down. And you know how it's been? I go, baby, I got this. It's fine. She's like, you ain't got it. Do you see how high it is? And from the front, I couldn't notice that it was like, it was like going up the entire fireplace. You couldn't tell the way it goes. She goes, get over here on the side. I went over on the side, and it was like, well, this is like, what, three feet? It was like eight, nine, ten feet high. All the way up in the trees. It was so massive. So I had to go get it. I got a hose. And so, and I sprayed it for at least 10 minutes, right? There's water, smoke everywhere, and it's still going. And then we sprayed it for another 10 minutes. And they got a little bit. And I put it down. And then Holly's like, it's not enough. And so she, she sprayed it for another 10 minutes, right? And we finally got it. It was still, it was fairly manageable enough to where we could go to bed. Next day I went outside. It was smoking and still on fire. When I went out the day after, it was still smoking. Thank you, Vince. And on fire. Finally, on the third day, I went out, and it was just ash. Watch this scripture for me. Throw that up there. Isaiah 61, 3. He will give you a crown of beauty for the ashes. There's a lot of things inside of us that are a fire, that it was garbage that happened to us. And God was speaking to some people here today saying, if you let it become ash, I'll exchange it for a crown of beauty. I'll give you something beautiful for that ugliness that happened in your past. I'll give you something amazing. Come on, somebody out there. I'll give you something great. But I need you to let it go all the way to ash. My ugly fireplace at the time when it was full of that junk, I simply went out there. It took me about five minutes 
and I scooped it all up and I put it in an empty trash can. Right? I put it in a, this is funny. I put it in an empty trash can. I scooped it all up. Took me about five minutes in there. But that stupid fire. <laughs> I had Camille come running in the house. I was in the house after I did that. She's like, hey, your trash can's on fire. I went out back. It burnt a hole. Look at the picture. It burnt a hole in the bottom. This stupid fire burnt a hole in my trash can. But I had my beautiful fireplace again. I exchanged ash. You know, all that lumber and stuff is very hard to carry. Unforgiveness is very difficult. You can't move it. It's, it's very hard to carry. But ash, very simple. Just a scoop. And it's gone. And I exchanged ugly for something beautiful. Write these three things down. I'm going to go real quickly with these as we're closing. Write these three things down. Number one, don't stir it up. The last thing that I want to do when that fire was going was to stir it up. Get it, get it all hot. Talk about it. Well, you know what so-and-so said. You know what so-and-so did. right? And even in my mind, I'm going over to my mind. And when you go over your mind over and over, it just gets hotter. You get that big fire like I did. And you know what happens? It begins to affect everybody around you. The Bible says bitterness defiles many. It begins to get up on your kids. It gets up on your spouse. It gets on your It gets everywhere that you're around. Stop stirring it up. Stop allowing yourself to think about it, to speak about it, to say anything about it. I want this to become an ash. I want to let it go, Pastor. I, I'm done, I've been carrying it around for 20 years. Stop stirring it up. Don't throw another log on it at all. Don't throw another log on it. Don't throw in another offense. Well, you know what? And keep throwing stuff on it and getting that fire hotter and hotter. Number two, you know what they do with the fire? They want to cover it. Love covers. Lover covers all. You want to put that fire out, the water that you need to put on there is love. It's love. What do you mean by love? It means that everything that I say about them, everything that I allow myself to think about them, is a thought of love. I want them to be blessed today. You may not, but I'm going to make sure I think that because I have the power over what I think. Lord, bless them, whatever they do today. Your hand is upon them. I want them to win. I want them, every time a thought comes in that's contrary, I throw some love on that. Well, I know I love them. I want them to win in this life. I want them to be blessed. I do that. What did Jesus do after they beat him? They whipped him. They, they, they put crowns of thorns in his head, pierced his side, put him up on the cross. His last thing he did, he said, Father, forgive them. They know what, not what they do. His last act was to forgive, to let it go. He goes, I got too much ahead of me to hold back by what's behind me. I'm not going to take this any farther. I won't take it to the tomb. I won't take it to the resurrection. I'm going to let it go behind me. Don't carry it with you at all. How do I get rid of it? I begin to love. I make every thought that I have a loving thought. I continue to spray that. It takes some time. I believe a couple of weeks of just spraying it down with your love over and over again. Every thought you have about them, make it a loving thought. Make it a good thought. Every prayer is a loving prayer. And number three, don't touch it. What happens when you touch a fire, you get burned? You touch that old hurt and that old pain. You touch it just for a moment. Let me think about it for a second. And now you've got a blister that'll last about a week on your minds. Don't allow yourself. That's why Paul said, forget those things. He says, I don't remember it. He went as far to say, even in his own life, he forgave himself. He goes, I've never wronged no man. I go, Paul, you killed people. I've never wronged anybody, Scott. I don't know what you're talking about. See, he, he forgave himself so far that he wouldn't even remember it. Don't allow yourself to remember it. And you'll find as you let it go, as you do that, you're about two weeks away. Some of you maybe three, four days away. From that fire turning into ash. Come on. And now God can take that place. Because you know that fire was eating up a whole section of you. And now that it's ash, God says, let me put some love in that place. Let me put some peace in that place. Let me put some joy on in there. Let me give you some hope. Let me give you something for your future. Let me give you something. And I'll exchange the ash. And the hurt and the pain, that abuse when you were a child, let me take that away and put, I'll be the father to the fathers. I know your daddy left, but I'll be your daddy. I'll be your blessing. I'll be your hope. I'll be your security. I know that there was a breakup, but I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to build you up. I'm going to take you up. I'll exchange the ashes of your past, the disappointments of your past, 
God says, I'll put something fresh on the inside of you, something new, something that'll energize you and get you moving forward. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you don't know where you're going to end up one day when you die, I want to give you that opportunity to get saved. It's simple. It's easy. You don't have to jump through a whole bunch of hoops. You don't have to be perfect. All you have to do is believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and was raised from the dead. I get it. You're going to make some more mistakes. We all do. But it doesn't take away your salvation. When I believe, I'm saved. Say this prayer with me. Believe it in your heart and you're saved. Dearly Father, I ask you right now, come into my life, be my Lord, and be my Savior. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and was raised from the dead. In Jesus' name, amen. You're saved. Make sure you get yourself in a church. Be blessed. We'll see you next week.